weekend or afternoon, depending on where you are. Um, my name is Julie Hollinger. I'm the Marketing and Communications Coordinator at the Petawawa Military Family Resource Center. Um, I am doing this presentation for one of my colleagues, Consuela LaPru, who is the Information Services Coordinator. We worked on it together, so a lot of the input is stuff that uh, she had wanted to contribute as well, but unfortunately she couldn't be here today. Um, so information is a service. Um, I should wait for the presentation to come up. Okay. Um, so when we talk about information as a service, we talk about um, information and the need for content always being changing. Um, in Petawawa, like as, as in every other base, we have most of our community is very itinerant. Um, they're coming, they're going a lot. So the needs that families have. Um, one posting season may be very different than the needs we have the following year with a different uh, different crop of people. Um, so one of the things that we need to do if we are providing information and providing information that people need is to be listening to them. Um, uh, Consuela works in the family center where all of our folks go in for clearance um, and clear out. They also do the welcome calls there as well. And uh, for her, she said it's, it's the listening process and actually asking questions um, people are not shy about saying what they need. Um, in fact, they're always um, they're always very willing to give that information. In some cases, they're surprised that we're asking. So when they're given the opportunity to let us know what they want, uh, they're always very forthcoming with that, and we appreciate that. But the other ways we get a lot of our feedback is on social media. Um, we keep an eye on my voice. Um, we, there's also um, some local spouse groups that we keep an eye on, and we oftentimes will get rumblings of things that people are concerned about, things that they're looking for in the community. Um, feedback from our staff is another key. Um, a lot of our child care people deal with families every single day, so they see a lot of the trends coming, um, as well as the community needs assessment. People are very clear about what they want and, and the format that they want it in. So those are the ways that we get to people. Um, and the other point we want to make is not making assumptions. So not making assumptions that what people wanted Last uh, last posting season is what they still want. Um, not uh, not looking at their profile and then just assuming they're going to need certain sets of information. Really asking those questions and uh, and having that two-way dialogue with them. And we can sort of switch slides there. So one of the key packages that the key uh, ways that we get information to people is through our welcome packages. Can you switch the slide there, Jonathan? Or do I do that? Okay, so for the welcome packages, um, we review the content every year, and I say every year because we print them every year, um, but we do review the content more frequently and we change our online version. So we do have um, booklets that we print out. We go back and forth a couple of times a year about whether we're going to continue doing that, but every single time we see the feedback on my voice or on, um, on the board, people are saying they want that piece of paper that they can write on. So we're going to continue doing the paper. We put that out once a year, but we keep the online version a little bit more current with changes as they come. Um, on a couple of occasions, we've tried to cut back the information that we have in the package just because the more pages you have, the more it costs. Um, and people keep telling us they don't want us to. This is the information that they want. We tried, you know, maybe we don't need to put information about all of the kennels in the area or horse boarding facilities. They come back to what they want, but they want that back. Um, the food banks, they want information about legal advice and mediation. Um, about home care services. Some of them are coming here and they're coming with a, a relative that is older or somebody who needs more care in the home. They want to know where they can find access to that information. Um, medical care, uh, unfortunately we can give them information about medical care in our hospitals, um, but the unfortunate case in Ted Walwood, there's no, one that, no place that we can really send them other than the hospital. So um, we can't give them the answer they want, but we can give them some answers. So for us, the balancing act is always between providing too much information and overwhelming people, which we're always very concerned about, and uh, cutting content that people want. So we sort of walk that line, and uh, we ask people to vote, vote our welcome package all the time and uh, on our warm calls, and they, they're the ones that sort of give us the guidance for that. Um, the other point we wanted to make was um, the continuous research that we do to keep the welcome packages up to date, and we do that um, on the local level to make sure you know that we're still sending to the right link for utilities, we're still sending in the right link for the town, but also province-wide. Um, we have a lot of people who are coming here from, uh, from uh, New Brunswick, from Gagetown. We have a lot of people who are coming here maybe from Shiloh or some other areas. And changing provinces is a big deal for them. It's like, you know, it's a new health card, it's a new driver's license. 
Um, Ontario recently introduced a new plan for drug care um, for youth, so providing people with information about that, that may be something that they're not familiar with or from the province they're coming from. So if we want to change slides again. One of the other things that we've done because we don't want to overwhelm people with information is we've developed some more targeted pieces. Um, so we um, do posters and we slice and dice information and keep uh, like content with like. like. Um, and I don't know about your MFRC, but one of the comments that we get a lot from people um, is the MFR, like MFRCs are all about children. If you don't have kids, there's nothing for, the, for you at the MFRC. We have a wide range of adult programming, and one of the things that we did is we create a monthly, um, monthly poster, monthly handout that only highlights um, adult information. So um, if um, if you are, if you come in and you don't have children, we're going to hand you that section, that adult only poster. We're going to let you know where we can find it on the website, um, just so we can sort of highlight that because we do actually have quite a bit for adults. They just don't see it. Um, we also, because we are in high readiness right now, we created a special poster for deployment uh, information. So um, if we hear a family is deployed, we can give them sort of a highlight of just those things for the quarter. Um, it's a little easier for them to find. They're not going through the entire booklet to find just that. And the other thing that we've been really highlighting is um, our French language programming. So we do a poster in French for our French language program, um, and that's very much appreciated by our francophone clients who sometimes feel like they're um, moving into a, a whole different world. There's not a lot of French in our community, so for them, that's a nice option to have. So if you change the slide, I gave you some examples of some of the um, posters that we do. So they look like this, depending on how much we have that month. They're e either um, 8.5 by 14 or 8.5 by 11. Um, the one on the far left that says April is our overall poster, but that's the same uh, format that we use for the adults only. Uh, we also have one for families only and for children only. We've taken um, our direction from CAF Connection, um, and we've sliced it down to the same, um, same categories as they have, adult, children, and youth, and families, and, and done it that way. The one in the middle is the deployment programs. We do that on a quarterly basis. Um, our deployment coordinator brings those to the briefings. Um, we have those um, in our child care locations for families that are, um, are using those. We also put them up in the community. And then the one on the, on the far right is our francophone programs for folks. So if we want to change slides again. Um, one of the things that we, uh, we find is um, what information to service is that uh, marketing is not the only person who's providing that information. It's a service that everybody in the agency uh, provides. So there are best ambassadors, and, and if you work at an MFRC, you know that people come up to you in the community and they're the asking you those questions. So we want to make sure um, in marketing and information services that everybody in the agency has those tools to give out. Um, it's a very much a timing uh, piece. We make sure that everyone's got all the information on deployment during high readiness. Um, this time of year, we're really taking a look at our, um, our entry point locations. So when a family comes in, we know that some of the first places they go to is casual care. One of the first places they're going to try maybe go to is um, our parent-child drop-in. We make sure that all of the information they need um, divided up by sector is in all those locations to be handing out. So last uh, slide. Um, to cut on printing costs, um, because it does cost quite a bit to do the color posters. We do mini posters, so we'll um, we take our posters and we print them up six to an eight and a half by eleven sheet, and then cut them. Um, so if they see the main poster, they can take one of the small ones with them. They can put it in their on their fridge, um, and they can sort of serve as a reminder. So those are the ones that we have uh, in in Play Troop. They have this great um, pocket thing where they have all the pockets, so they can see all of the uh, the posters all at once, and they can grab one if they want. The other thing that we have on the right is the agency business card. Um, in Petawawa, we have seven different locations. Um, so if you're giving someone in, like a, an information about the PMFRC, there's not one NIC telephone number. So we have sort of the key numbers that people ask about most frequently are general inquiries, children's services, people want to know what employment, all those numbers are there. It's on one double-sided business card. Um, and we hand them out to staff if they want to keep them in their wallets for people because you're going to get stopped in the grocery store. Um, we have them at all of our front desks. Um, so sometimes someone takes a card for one thing, but I want them to have all of those telephone numbers later on because, you know, they might come for information about deployment, but they might need uh, children's services or they may need mental health services later on, and we want them to have that with them. So those are the things that we have to add a well on, and I'm going to hand it over to Carrie.
Thanks, Julie. That's awesome. I actually took quite a few notes while, I, while you're talking there. Um, yeah, so I guess, Jonathan, if uh, you can put my presentation up. Awesome. Thank you. So, yeah, just to uh, really to piggyback on what Julie said as far as the uh, the content, what I've done uh, for this presentation is look at it for a little bit more as a um, overview presentation. So what Julie had said uh, um, from content is absolutely awesome. That's that's what we're uh, we're striving to do as well. And I like I said, I just took a few notes there from what Julie had said, some fantastic ideas. Um, when we're looking at information as a service, um, well, I looked at it from the standpoint of how are we able to actually get it out to our um, our clients as, as efficiently as possible. So we're looking at things, number one, uh, for distribution. Um, we try to raise the bar each year and make ourselves a little bit better. And uh, so as far as distribution, we're, we really want to meet people where they're at and using the uh, the devices and the media that they are actually using. So number one is distribution. The second one is consistency. Um, what we're looking at is having a consistent message throughout all the channels that we're using, whether it's on Facebook, whether it's on, uh, oh, there I am. I didn't do that. Go back. <laughs> um, wherever, wherever it is, whatever channel uh, it is that we're using, we want to make sure that that messaging is, is consistent. And then finally is accuracy. Uh, so we really want to be saying uh, the right things at the right time. So I'll just give you, I don't know if I'm controlling this or if you're controlling it, Jonathan, but oh, there we go. I'm just going to give you my 30 second elevator speech. I'm the communication specialist here at the Kingston Military Family Resource Center. And I've been here for eight years and this is my passion. Uh, I've been since 90, 1991. Um, I've been in marketing and communications, uh, management, sales, that kind of thing. So this is really, this is really the right, the right fit for me. What I looked at uh, as far as, as what I was just mentioning in the beginning is where are the families actually looking to receive information and where can we communicate with them the best? So if you look at the MFS social media strategy, 38% uh, of the families are looking for information or they like to get information through social media. The 37% like to get information through websites and the biggest one is 63% like to get their information through email. So we took a look at that and we, we try to structure the communication as much as possible um, within that area. Now, having said that, the next slide, I'm going to show you exactly how um, the distribution channels that we're looking at. Of course, having said everything about the online stuff, the first thing that we're going to look at is print. Um, but there are some families that are still interested in print. And it was kind of interesting because Julie and I were just talking yesterday. And the, the biggest request, uh, like Julie said, is that the welcome package is still done in print. So if we encounter people that are looking for a welcome package in print, we can go ahead and print that. But what we're looking at doing now is putting together the welcome package in segments. So it's, it's essentially done in, in different categories. So you can go online, you can click on whatever category you're looking at or that you're interested in, and then you can get the information there. The other thing we do whenever we're welcoming people is we actually have uh, one of the, the staff, is, her job is to welcome people. So we have a giant wall of information that we, uh, that we can pull from, and then she'll sit down and give them the information that's specifically tailored for them. So, so they've just got the information that, that they're looking for. It's not you know, a 100-page document that 90% of it isn't, isn't uh, relevant for them. But what we've done for print, uh, we have a uh, publication that we do on the base three times a year called Garrison Life. Um, now, what we've done is um, we, we basically package all the information in one location. So Garrison Life's kind of been a metamorphosis of the KMFRC program guide, uh, as well as the base used to do a, uh, a magazine once a year. We used to do the program guide three times a year. So we combined the two and we included PSP and that's where Garrison Life comes in. So that's our base magazine um, that we do three times a year and, and essentially it's split up into thirds. So it's, it's us, the base and PSP. And then the local newspapers are very, uh, they're very generous with us. If we have anything that we want uh, published uh, as far as articles and, and whatnot that's going on, then they are, uh, they're very willing to publish that for us. Next thing that we're looking at, oh, there we go. Oh. Well, now I'm getting all over the place. All right, 
online. So this is the big, big one, um, or the second big, big one. Uh, of course, CAF Connection and uh, our social media. So online, we're currently on uh, Facebook and Twitter. And during uh, this year, we're probably looking about Q2. We're going to look at getting on to Pinterest and Instagram. And the reason for that is Instagram is becoming much more popular within the age range of the people that we are looking to target. And with, uh, with Pinterest, what we can do is we can actually set up the boards so that they're done by category as well. So we can have all the posters, for example, for child and youth can be in one, on one board. And it just makes it a lot easier for somebody to easily access everything in one location. Um, it's very, very quick to just kind of go through the graphics uh, as opposed to looking through Facebook and trying to find, you know, a program that you might have seen last week that's now uh, way, way down uh, the feed. Now, the biggest thing, there we go, is our broadcast side. And, and this is where we fit in with that 63% of people liking to receive information by email. Because what we've done here is we have a blog called, uh, what the heck is it called? Kingston Garrison News. That's right there. Um, Kingston Garrison News is, again, a combination of us, uh, the MFRC, with PSP and with the base. So that's one that we do uh, that we do on a monthly basis, and it's really it's really a nice fit because we all populate the blog, and then the base webmaster is uh, is on there, and and he sends out an email to everybody on the DWN, and also everybody who's on all of our email lists. So he sends out an email that's basically a summary of the main stories that we have on the blog for that month, and then everybody has access to that. So it works really really well. We've only done that since February. Uh, but we had really, really good feedback from that as well. Uh, the other bits, uh, base TV, we have a TV in almost every unit on base, and uh, so we have access that way to be able to to get all of our programs and services and whatever we want to announce. It's, all, it's, it's actually inside every one of the units. And again, local TV and local radio, it's pretty much the same as uh, the local newspapers. They're very generous with us. They'll go ahead and and publish, you know, pretty much any of the stories or, or any uh, events that we're that we're doing. Now the final piece is it looks a little bit complex, you know, right on the screen all all at once. But if we if we kind of take a look at it piece by piece, we try to tie everything together using CAF Connection as our main hub. So everything goes through. Uh, we use basically KMFRC.com, uh, which is then redirected to uh, the page on on uh, on CAF Connection. So it, it goes from KMFRC.com, if we use this one as a good example, because we try to, to make everything consistent and tie everything together. So with VFP, of course, uh, using the main, uh, the main um, uh, domain, or KMFRC.com, you go to KMFRC.com slash VFP, and that goes to the CAF Connection main page. So that's, that's Kind of the hub of everything but then we also have you can see garrison news in the left hand corner that directs then obviously to cap connection our facebook pages our twitter pages and everything go to that main that main page so that's we try to keep it consistent like that and use that system uh, essentially in um, in everything that we do as far as as promo, uh, promoting our programs and whatnot um, and something I haven't included on the slide as well is our family networks, which is a, a big uh, a big way for us to communicate between uh, between us, between the unit, and between the family. So it's a real it's a it really ties things together um, between between all of us. It makes it a really smooth transition to be able to communicate from deaf, essentially from us straight through to the families. Because what we're finding is it's it's easy enough to communicate to the military member. But then it's difficult for that military member to remember to bring the information back home to their family. So, so the uh, the family networks are absolutely huge for us. And they each each unit has its own Facebook page where the spouses go on the Facebook page, and that that's not shared with the military member. That's a it's basically it's a secret page for the spouses to um, to communicate with each other in there. So that's pretty much. Uh, Everything from us as far as uh, as using information as a service and uh, and being able to distribute and, and coordinate everything that way. So I guess I'll hand it over to you again there, Jonathan. Sure. Okay. So does anyone have any questions for either uh, Carrie or Julie? 
on making information a service, or maybe that you have something to share locally that uh, that you found works really well for your audience. Uh, yes, uh, it's Marie-Ève uh, from Valcartier. Yep. Um, well, earlier we spoke about uh, welcome packages and uh, about the fact that they cost a lot of money to print. Uh, I just wanted to share with you that uh, it's been a year now or a year and a half since we started using um, USB drives, which we uh, either mail or give uh, people when they come here. And we've been doing this for uh, people posted in here or for uh, veterans as well. Okay, so and you find that the USB drive is working quite well for you? Absolutely, and people love it, and it costs like uh, one fifth of you know uh, printing the whole package. Okay. Excellent. Yeah, people, we we looked at that before, I and mean, it's an interesting comment because I, I like the idea. Do you get comments from people who um, who have concerns about like if maybe they're accessing the information maybe on a tablet or a or on their phones, or are most people saying that they can access the USB instead? Marie-Ève, did you hear the question? I'm sorry, no, I didn't uh, uh, the sound. Uh, well, we have a, a little hard time uh, hearing. Uh, I am sorry, could you repeat? Um, the question that we had is we, we've looked at doing that before and we've considered it. I think it's interesting that you are because it, it puts a little bit more weight behind our argument. Um, we've had a lot of people saying that they are concerned about the USB drive because they're not using their laptops, they're using a tablet or they're using their phone. Um, so that it's okay. hard for them to have a system to use that. Yeah, well, it's, it's <coughs> sorry, uh, it's a good point. Uh, well, uh, when people use a, a, either a tablet or a, a cell phone, we can uh, direct them to the cat connection. Um, but for our part, we heard a lot of uh, great comments on this, and I don't think we ever heard such a comment here. So we continue with this, <clears throat> but uh, I will uh, ask my uh, my colleagues if they heard uh, uh, such a thing. But uh, I don't think we did, and uh, we made sure that the uh, the USB drive that we use is a business card um, shape. And we uh, we printed uh, you know our logo on it, our, our toll free phone number, as well as the cash connection. So you know people can uh, um, have access to to the cash connection just by reading what's written on on the on the USB card. Uh, but it's it, it's a good point, and I will ask my colleague, uh, as I said, if they heard something like that before. Did you say it's shaped like a business card? Yes. Can and they cost about seven dollars each, or uh, two or four gigs. I can remember. I'd love to see a picture of that. I could, of course, which I'm afraid to see, or maybe I can send it to Jonathan, and then you can just, you know, forward the picture to uh, uh, to all the the, uh, the locations. Absolutely, yeah, and Marie that's an excellent yeah. idea. If you could just uh, take a photo of it, even with your cell phone and send it to me. What I'll do is I'll make sure that uh, that gets sent around but also uploaded to the website under web exchanges just for uh, some ideas. And that goes not only for Vet Cartier but for all the others uh, on the line right now. I realize that we're running out of time right now but if you have uh, some great ideas locally that you found work really well for particular demographics in your area, then please feel free to send them along. You can just send me an email, you can take photos and send them to me. Whatever you send to me, I'm happy to upload to the website because that's what these web exchanges are all about, is basically uh, just sharing great ideas for things that you found work for you locally. Okay, I'm just going to check the chats quickly. Okay, so it looks like uh, we've run out of time, but really the web exchange is just the beginning of the conversation, which is why I do the roll call at the beginning so that you know who's attending. Um, so please do take the opportunity to communicate not only with uh, Julie and Terry, uh, if you wish, which is why I, pr I provided their 
contact info at the beginning, but also anyone else here just to share some of the great ideas today. And once again, I'll be putting the recording of this session up on the website as well as any resources that people send to me. So thanks very much for everyone for joining us today. Terry and Julie, if you could just stay on the line for a few minutes after everybody else has signed off, that would be sure. great. And for the rest of you, thanks very much for joining us and have a great rest of the day.